you know, I had a situation where my, my, you know, my dad, I was going to partner with somebody and my dad said, you know, uh, ask them if they know how to play golf. I go, dad, I'm not that great at golf. I'm not going to go embarrass myself. He goes, doesn't matter. He goes, as long as you play the game well and properly, you'd be okay. I said, well, what's the point other than spending four hours with somebody really getting to know them? I can see that. That's that's solid. Like there's so, somebody once told me more business has been done on the golf course than any boardroom in America, right? And and you know, I always thought it was a bar, but apparently it's a golf course. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and I said to him, what what else is the point? And he said to me, he goes, you watch him. He said, if this person, if you're playing a real game of golf, and this person hits a ball out of the green and in the brush and they hit it from where it lays, which is the rule in golf, somebody you can trust That's because right. they're not cheating behind your back. He said, but if you know that this person picked up the ball and threw it into the green and that's where they hit from, this is probably not somebody you want to be in business with. And, and I asked him, I said, geez, man, that's, you know, I could see it. I get it. He goes, David, he goes, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. David Kerr's looking clean with his whole sales team. We ain't come to talk nonsense. It's all about the process and profits until we make a billion from deposits. He never slacked and teach him to take action. So far from whack and never gave up his passion. Can't catch him lack and dab it down on his fashion. He forever stacking, running up all the cash. In. Real estate mastermind. Check out his book. He gave us the blueprint. I really can't hate the grind. Hey, 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 what's going, every, what's going on, everybody? David Adam Kurz here, founder of the Freedom Organization, a coaching and consulting company. Super excited to bring you the Freedom Achiever podcast. What's the purpose of the Freedom Achiever podcast? What we do is we bring what we consider to be freedom achievers to be our guests, talk about their lives, their worlds, their families, their businesses, and things about what is currently happening in the world today. And we like to have these discussions because these discussions may impact your life in a positive manner. And if you know anything about me and the Freedom Organization, our entire mission is to impact over a million people in a positive manner. And so that's what we're doing today. So I'm super excited because I want you guys to listen to what we're saying, internalize it, use it in your life and business. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to us. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple, if you're on Google Play, wherever you're listening to us, I need you to hit that subscribe button and be in tune with what we're doing consistently. Like, comment, share. Those are all very helpful. Let people know the conversations that we're having and share out there with other people. We're super excited to bring you guys this. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I have the great honor to have Prentice Hold on. Uh, Prentice Holt comes from the great state of Tennessee. He's there, but he does work the entire southeast region of the United States. 20 years in real estate, maybe more. I don't know. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Also runs a mortgage team. So he's also a mortgage branch manager. So he's doing the real estate side and the mortgage side, which is pretty phenomenal. He is, uh, as he places himself, an unwavering dad, bootstrap entrepreneur, embodied, embodying hustle and forging dreams with resolve, which is freaking awesome. Uh, you got a picture up there called Zero Percent Luck, 100% Hustle. I love that. I was checking that out, man. Thanks for being on the show, dude. Man, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for taking the time to share this uh, share this knowledge and, uh, and show some love. I appreciate you, David. Yeah, man, absolutely. So so let's, let's dig into this real quick because we're having a pretty great conversation before. First of all, uh, when I asked you, what are some of the things you'd like to discuss? It's the first, first thing that you brought up was something that I say consistently. If you have been in the real estate market for the last 10 years or less, you have only ever understood an ascending market and taking orders. 2024 is going to prove your worthiness in this industry. Tell me how you feel, man, because I just like, just with my statement, you already know where I'm going with this shit, right? So, absolutely. So, so, so you know, you, you're giving a little bit more credibility, I think, to some agents than than I would. Uh, Ten years for sure, but even in the last five or six, you're doomed. You know, the the ways that, that the order taking events that have happened to us in the last five years 
and the order taking strategies that the majority of the agents, single agents out there, particularly, and even some small teams that have that, that have embraced that model, they're going to collapse. 2024, you know, when I when I started 2024, my one word for 2024 was intentional. Right. Probably should have changed that to more like execution, but that was more of a thing last year. Uh, but, you know, every year there's a new strategy, one new strategy to focus on. Uh, that I really, really, really coach on, talk to people on, try to try to try to put into people's minds about how they can continue to take their business to the next level, what they need to do to stay in front of this whole technology change, this whole evolution of how business is done, the whole legality piece that we've been faced with and will continue to be faced with as the industry changed. Uh, taking orders, if that's what you're all about, it's cool. I love you, but get the hell out of the business because things are about to rock your world real quick. Listen, I um I like you said intentional and I like um and I think this is going to go right into what I came up with for 2024. And um you know, I just started to really look at the way people were acting, the way people were behaving, the shifts that people were doing, the urgency and the scarcity that people were feeling and and I came up with a phrase that is now my 2024 phrase, it would probably be my phrase for life moving forward. But the phrase is how you do anything is how you'll do everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I came up with this because, you know, I've heard some stories that I can get into. You. I've mentioned them in other podcasts. You know, I had a situation where my my, you know, my dad, I was going to partner with somebody. And my dad said, you know, uh, ask them if they know how to play golf. I go, dad, I'm not that great at golf. I'm not going to go embarrass myself. He goes, it doesn't matter. He goes, as long as you play the game well and properly, you'd be okay. And so what's the point other than spending four hours with somebody really getting to know them? I can see that. That's that's solid. Like there's so, somebody once told me more business has been done on the golf course than any boardroom in America. Right. And and, you know, I always thought it was a bar, but apparently it's a golf course. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and I said to him, what what else is the point? And he said to me, he goes, you watch him. He said, if this person, if you're playing a real game of golf and this person hits a ball, out of the green and in the brush and they hit it from where it lays, which is the rule in golf. Somebody you can trust That's because right. they're not cheating behind your back. He said, but if you know that this person picked up the ball and threw it into the green and that's where they hit from, this is probably not somebody you want to be in business with. And, and I asked him, I said, geez, man, that's, you know, I could see it. I get it. And he goes, David, he goes, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. And so, so, so this, yeah, so it stuck with me. And now we're talking in this new kind of era of, of sales period, because the entire country is in a kind of a sales battle, right? Whether it be real estate or bicycles, you know, everything's become so expensive. Inflation's out of control. Um, there's rumors right now, like, dude, I don't know if you saw this, but, you know, I'm sure everyone has now seen New York, uh, the judge in New York and what they did with Donald Trump. Uh, President Trump and the $355 million he has to pay back. You've got Elena Cardone starting a GoFundMe to pay that off for him and, and things like that. And then the truckers of America have announced that they're going to stop delivering to New York. So what do you think is going to happen to the price of food in New York? Right? Like, like everyone's... Yeah, everyone's going through a frenzy right now because they're running to the supermarket to get a month's worth of food at least. You know, because they don't know what's going to happen next week or the week after. This is like the toilet paper COVID issues, right? Like, I don't even know how that correlated, but that's, you know, I don't, I don't know how toilet paper and COVID to this day. I still have no idea what the correlation between toilet paper and COVID was. But man, I kept I kept thinking toilet paper sandwiches were a thing, but they just what they didn't sound too appealing to me, Captain. It was nuts, man. It was nuts. But now you've got all this stuff happening in the world where sales is becoming that much harder. If you want to sell a house today, you need to speak to three times the amount of people, right? You need to connect with three to three to six times the amount of people. We've done the studies, we've seen them, right? And so, and the same thing for a bicycle, like right now, people are thinking twice about buying a brand new bicycle. You know, what costs you 300 bucks for a nice bike a few years ago is now six, $700 for the same bike. You know, and and I always say it, whether you're whether you're in the in the market of lollipops, bicycles or real estate, it's all the same shit. 
you know, and, you know sales is sales and people's desire to purchase is what it is. And right now, what we're facing is that the desire to purchase and the desire to relieve themselves of that money are not matching up. And so you have right. to be a significantly better salesperson, well trained, well thought out. Like people sometimes, you know, I you know I coach, we're a coaching and consulting company. And and people sometimes tell me, like, oh, I don't know if I want to do the coaching. And I'm like, dude, completely up to you. Like, I'm not even pushing anymore. You want you want to get ahead of the game, have somebody teaching you exactly what to do and to hold you accountable for doing it. Otherwise. Keep doing what you think is the right thing to do. And I'll see you at TGI Fridays when I'm ordering a bird. You know, like that's where we are today. You're either going to invest in yourself and be all in and, and shift and adjust with the times, or you're going to be out of the fucking game. I mean, that's a very valid point. You know, the definition of insanity, as you very well know, is doing the same old thing, expecting different results, right? And we're seeing agents do this all the time. They're not investing in themselves and investing in the business. Uh, the business has changed and evolved since I got in the business a long time ago. As a matter of fact, back when we had MLS books, the MLS had just originated, but we still had MLS books. There was a transition. So that's how long I've been in the business. Uh, yeah. but, but sadly enough, the evolution of how we become a professional and how we become really, really good at what we do, a lot of people haven't changed their ways. They haven't changed their mindset. They haven't changed their skill set and they've become just a glorified order taker. So the way technology has changed our business, it has actually made it somewhat more difficult for us to be who we are. Uh, therefore, we had to get out in front of it. We have to be smarter. We have to be better. We have to be bigger, bolder, and we have to be a bigger brand, right? It's made it easy in some respects, but it's made it more difficult as a sales agent or a sales professional to be able to do what we do. Sadly, I think the industry as a whole has weakened its value uh, with us because of technology and because of some other things. No sense in going down rabbit hole. But the economy, the market, the checks and balances in this country are way off. And if you don't get in front of that and you don't position yourself as as a brand, as somebody that the consumer likes and trusts and decides they want to do business with, you're out. Yeah. And and, and we're it's, seeing this daily. Yeah, I, it's a um, mentor of mine said it's not. It's not technology and AI that will replace you. Mm. It's the professional that understands how to use technology and AI at a high level that will replace you, right? It's shifting with the times, you know? That's right. The one element that will never be replaced is the human element, but you still have to be smart enough to utilize the tools in your toolbox to make you that much better, right? To yeah. put you in a position that, that elevates you above the competition. It's funny. I went, I went uh, to grab some food with one of my kids yesterday and we we're sitting in this uh, restaurant and um, there was a robot that was walking or, or rolling around on wheels. There's a robot on wheels that was rolling around to the tables delivering food. And wow. yeah, and I was like, oh, shoot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> did, did we just get rid of the bus boy? You know, like what happened, you know? And but it was interesting because you just said we'll, we'll never get rid of the human element. I think at some point, some jobs will get rid of the human element, uh, but not a customer service job like real estate sales, right? Like right, right. Uh, and there are so many, I think, believe it or not, I think mortgage lending could be replaced, right? Like you can take AI technology and replace the lender completely. But real estate is such a personal thing. It's like doctors. Like, I don't think we'll ever replace doctors with robots, right? Like, I yeah. think there's, there's doctors have a certain, not besides all the knowledge and all the studying that they do for a lifetime, many of them, the good doctors have an intuition, right? They, they see things, they learn from things and they go, huh, I don't know if I like this too much. And I don't know that a robot will be able to have intuition, you know? 
Um, shit, who knows? You know, 100 years from now, I can't speak for that. I know Elon Musk is trying somewhere in a duck basement, right? But you got it. You know, yeah. But uh, you know, when when you when you look at what we're creating and what we're developing in a world that we're in, it's those people. And so, so going back to the robot, it's those people who use it the best that are going to win, right? So this robot would come out, roll up to your table, and the robot would say, "Please wait for your server to serve your food." And so it wasn't designed so that you as the consumer could reach over and grab your plate. They still provided the service of serving you at the restaurant, right? And so the so and it was like super loud, by the way. It was like, please wait for your server. So and I think that was on purpose so that the servers could look for it and head over to it and start serving the food. And it was it, I'm, I'm watching this thing. As soon as the last plate came off, the thing backed up and rolled out back to the kitchen, you wow. know? And, and it, it, they didn't have to press buttons. They didn't have to do any of that. You know, I'm sure that in the kitchen, they press which table to send it to, you know, yeah. but that's about it. Like it knew the plates were off and it rolled out. So again, the service of the human element was still there, right? It, it still felt worthy to leave a tip, right? <laughs> you know, um, but I think you're, you know, you're, you're, you're right that technology is making some people lazy for sure. I think that's that's a big piece, but I also think that it's because they're not embracing technology at a full 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 benefit, right? If 100%. if you yeah, if you fully embrace it, then you have to work on it, and and you still have to be the service provider. Uh, right now, we have tech that will automatically dial for you. We have tech that will automatically text for you. We have tech that will have conversations via text. We have AI voice. Uh, conversations that are happening right now. There's so many things, right? And that could replace the average cold caller, but it won't replace the result is that the AI has a great conversation. It does a live transfer to a human being who says, where can I meet you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And, exactly and right. there's still going to be a human element, but you have to understand this stuff and understand this process at a really high level. You know, when, when the internet came out, we used to laugh at the brokers that refused it, right? Like, you know, I'm going to still wait for the faxes to come in in the morning with the new listings. We're like, dude, there's an MLS now. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could, you could just look this up at the touch of your AOL fingers, you know? And, um, and, and a lot of people refused it. And I think, I think we're in, web 3.0 right now and there's a lot of people refusing the ai balance they don't they don't want to implement it they don't and and i think a lot of it has to do with lack of knowledge lack of knowledge i said lack of knowledge uh lack of knowledge and fear fear the fear of using tech the fear of having to learn something new you know and i think a lot of agents besides besides the agents that that we talked about a moment ago that have been in for the last 5 years and have no fripping clue what to do in the next stage of their real estate career or mortgage career or sales career there's also a whole another set of folks that are not embracing the change of technology as quickly as it's happening that's right you know it, it, interesting enough the technology is there to enhance your ability to be better, right? You have to, you, this goes back to not focusing on as much on the intricate pieces of the real estate business where, you know, Oh, I've got to know my contracts and that. Yes, you need to do that, but that's one one level. We're at 301. I mean, you call it web 3.0. I call it level 300, right? We're, we're, we're out of infancy stage. We're into, you know, well past the growth stage. If you've been in the last five or six years or even 10 years, your business has to be at a growth phase, right? If you're not at a growth phase, you missed a, you missed a real good opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, so embracing it and understanding how to use it. You said fear. I agree with you 100%, but the only way to overcome that, right, is to get in and do it. You got so many people that don't have the time, right, because they're so busy doing that old school stuff or, or, uh, they're too busy with that onesie and twosie transaction. I have agents that I have worked with numerous times supported, coached, mentored that still use a old 
template that was created five years ago to still write a contract because they don't have the confidence or the knowledge or the self-support to freehand write a contract from scratch. Right. You know, right. they can't remember right. their terminology. These are the very people we're sitting here talking about that got in the business the last five, six years, or even 10 years ago that haven't evolved with the way the business has evolved or gotten out in front of it. So the tools right. that are there are there for your benefit. It's how do you improvise? How do you repurpose and how do you create the new version of yourself, the new version of your business model, or the new version of you utilizing these tools? They make you stronger, faster and better and make you more efficient if you just use them or learn how to use them. The, the fear right. of the failure in industry is, is not the industry itself anymore. It's the technology. And, and that's the big problem we have. Forget failing in the business. Forget failing, you know, on the old school tactics that used to work. Embody and embrace the new stuff. And be, be really good at it. And you will just, you know, it enhances your ability to just be better. But maybe that mindset, as I am seeing more and more of, maybe that mindset still falls only in the three percenters of the category that I talked about nationwide. The three percenters are the people who embrace, evolve, do, and grow. And the other 97% are just transactional monkeys. And that's a bad position to be in. Oh, well, I can do 10 transactions or five transactions a year to average sales price of my market, maybe four or 500,000. Hey, that gives me enough money to live because I may be married or I may not be married or I may be this or maybe that which is the incorrect mindset of the people who are in the bit, the 97% of the people who are in the business that not, not trying to evolve their business. And, and man, that just makes it tough for that three percenter like you, me yep. and all these other people that we, that we keep in our circle and under our tent that are constantly yep. trying to try to be better. Yep. I got to say some, um, do you believe that no matter what happens in our world, and I believe this, but I'm asking what your opinion is. No matter what happens in this world, if we, you know, get all the crazy technology, if we turn into iRobot, if it turns into Terminator, if we become Dune, like whatever happens in the world over the next 500 years, there's always going to be, I call it a top 10%. You said 3%. I call it a top 10%. There's always going to be a top 10% that dominates 90% of what's happening in any industry. You know, and 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 do you believe that that top ten percent? It's a two part question, right? Do you believe that is the thing? And also, do you believe that top ten percent uh, constantly changes because things happen that make people drop off and new people step in? Do you feel that that constantly changes, or do you feel that there is a constant in it for long periods of time? So, be the two part question. So, your your my my feeling is found on your 10 percent the temp the top 10 percent doing 90 percent of the business as we would call it that they are the they are the pioneers okay the three percent i talk about are the trailblazers they're the people who embody embrace everything as soon as it comes out they want to know more they starve for for new stuff they starve for power they starve for attention they starve for that idea that we can just that we can use everything there we're, we're trial and error right We'll invest yeah. in, in the time we're R and D in. Uh, something don't work, we pull out, we play. That's the three percenters I talk about just for the listeners. So yes, do I think 10% is is that number? Yes, the three percenters of, of us go all in no matter what. And and in times like this that pull back is this, we go full freaking throttle, right? We we don't use gasoline anymore, we use freaking rocket fuel. You know, we're gonna get right. there. It's the point. Um, but the second part of that question, which is a very, very, very um, important answer is yes. And it's going to change even faster than it has in the past. Look at the evolution of technology, okay? I'm a first generation iPhone user. I'm now 15 in. Come on, man. I was $200 in the first gen. Now I'm $1,500 for a damn phone. It did the same thing. <laughs> it's offered a little bit faster processor, stored a little bit more stuff. It's got man, a better it's camera. It's got a better that's camera, that's man. Come on. Yeah. Haven't you seen the billboards? <laughs> oh, my old Polaroid just doesn't work anymore, you know? Uh, Listen, man. I, honestly, yeah. I, I was just saying this in a previous podcast. I was saying that that I feel like every year we just buy a new camera that has the capability to text and talk. 
I mean, I can shoot the moon and get it get get better than NASA in some situations, right? With the iPhone. But yes, to answer that question, we are changing even at a more rapid pace. I used to say 10 years ago we were changing every three to five years. I'm telling you now, buddy, we're changing every damn year, every six months. There's new age technology and new products that are coming out. We call it shiny object syndrome, which yeah, is certainly yeah, a bad yeah. problem to have, but it is something we've all fallen victim to. Uh, but we're changing that fast and we're not going to slow down. So if you don't get in and find your seat on the bus, man, you're going to be left way behind. I'm a part of a broadcast group um, for AI technology. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have a very good friend. Uh, uh, his name's Pavan Argawal. You probably know who he is. Uh, mm -hmm. He is the owner of Sun West Mortgage. And he's a good friend of mine. And I'm constantly having conversations with these guys about the evolution of technology and AI technology. And the broadcast that I'm in, I can't converse with them. I'm just part of a broadcast on WhatsApp. But I'm constantly being updated on all the stuff that's coming up, right? And so remarkably enough, in April, I'm going to be meeting Pavan in Vegas for a for a conference. It's a one day thing called the the Mindset Summit, and our keynote speaker is a robot. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, everything in me can't wait to get there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I want to I want to walk up and I literally want to lay eyes and hands on this thing. I, you know, it, it it it's not something to be scared of. It's just something no, that you man. have to. It's just something you have to accept. It's something you have to embrace. I mean, listen, when I go in the super. I don't shop in the supermarket anymore. I, I actually have, you know, my groceries since it's offered a personal shopper shop for my groceries. I don't have time to go pull that. I just have them pull it. They bring it out to my ride. I go home, put it up. Life's good. But the self checkout. Listen, thing, man, I, I I don't go to supermarkets. I got an app called Instacart. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I rely on Instacart. They bring me my food. Look at this thing. I'm going to show you this so you can check it out. So this is Mindset Summit. Check out our keynote speaker, Grace the Robot. Grace, Grace the Robot the represents the next step on healthcare applications. Grace is designed with a specific focus on showcasing how robotics can play a crucial role in sectors like medicine and caregiving. Her presence at the event underscores the event's highlight on health and medicine, areas where AI and robots continue to make significant strides in humanity. Dude, we just finished saying how a robot may never change, pick out a doctor, right? But this is it right here, man. This is going to be a, such a great event. I can't wait to get there. Um, I mean, you can see pictures on, uh, they put wigs on her. They like, and, and she communicates she talks and she's the keynote speaker man she's the keynote speaker this is this is excellent and, and and you know there's there's let me let me preface this you know in a robotic world you know it's not to say robots aren't going to be a pivotal part of our life and our industry going forward there there is some piece to being human that will still work and work very right. well in in all facets of sales, let, let, let's go, let's don't just say real estate or mortgage, let's say all facets of sales. There's still a little bit of a human element piece that will always be part of this deal. But how you don't get weeded out or how you don't become the selected chosen one to be kicked out of business is yeah. up to you. It's up to you and your mindset and what you decided to do with your business. And that's the most important thing. So, you know, we go back to fear. Forget it, man. I mean, it's it's not even it's not even part of our vocabulary in order to to evolve unless we want to die out in the industry and let the industry just kind of push us out. Um, but but, you know, these are things that will help us. We just have to embrace them and utilize them at the fullest capacity that we possibly can. Yep. yep. Um, I, I think I think we're in an amazing world right now, personally, mm -hmm. and to bring the positivity to this. Uh, and, and say that I think we're in an amazing place right now. We're getting to witness some shit in our lives. Like, you know, we, we've gotten to witness it twice, if you really think about it. You know, the world was the world for a very long time until the internet came out and communication got better, iPhones and all this stuff. We got to witness that evolution of social communication. We got to witness companies like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these companies come to life and connect people from all parts of the world, right? Now you can have friends in 
the other side of the country you've never even met in person, you know? And, and before, yeah, you could do that, but you, it was a lot harder to find somebody you wanted to be a pen pal with, right? And, <laughs> and usually they were at St. Quentin, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, now you can like connect on social media, which is insane. And you could create followers and you could have presence and you could be semi-famous, internet famous in, the, in today's world. And then we're getting to witness it again now with AI technology with spaceships landing like dude come on it's like star wars we got spaceships going into space coming back and landing in a perfect spot on a moving moving pad yeah, on the yeah. water like, what kind of insanity is that man you know what i mean and so so you know, we live in this crazy world right now and i'm really stoked to be a part of it man i think i think you know god willing fingers crossed before i leave this earth i get the witness colonization of mars by at least a few people you know what i mean like at least one one unit built with a few people testing life on mars you know and it's a, and you know it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thought because david you and i come we've 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 matured in a generation of coming from uh and being raised by uh boomers right <clears throat> and seeing the seeing and hearing and experiencing what they grew up in right and and the evolution of things as i was a kid and even growing into a teenager even into a young adult seeing the things evolve and seeing how time has progressed and things have progressed and then now okay we, we've seen what's happened in the last five or ten years which didn't happen five or every five or ten years as we were growing right. up Right. Now it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter, but you're you're exactly right. As 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 diverse and as open minded and as as flexible as our generation is, in terms of what we came from, which was, hey, you didn't send an email, you wrote a damn letter, right? Or you typed a yeah. letter on a typewriter yeah. and you mailed the damn thing, and waited for a response because all you had was a regular landline phone or a cordless phone that did absolutely nothing but connect you with somebody else all the way to where we are today with social media and our advancements and our footprints and our ability to have outreach at the click of a keyboard to what's to come. I don't know, but it's going to be. Oh, so I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't, it, it, I don't have that story. sort of imagination, you know, it's insanity, yeah. you know, yeah, and so like, yeah, I know, I know, you know, it's funny. They said, you know, by now we should have had uh, flying cars, you know, and mm -hmm. I laugh at that because I'm like, listen, I don't know where you drive, but where I drive, we should not have flying cars, right? Yeah, so, no. <laughs> you know, but but now we start to think, okay, wait a minute. The only reason you wouldn't have flying cars is because you would actually have to maneuver them. And I don't think everybody's capable of that because they're not even capable of fucking driving on the road, right? Yeah, so like they can't even follow the rules of the road. <laughs> right. But now what happens? Tesla comes out and goes, cool, don't worry. We'll take over the driving for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then you look at what Tesla is building for real, for real. They have mm -hmm. cars um, and you believe they're selling you electric cars and you believe that that's where the value of Tesla is. The value of Tesla is in the data because every car that drives every mile all over this country, all over this world is sending data back to Tesla on terrains, roads, access, you name it. So if a company has that sort of information, that sort of download, now he owns X Twitter. So now he gets people, right? He's got how many how many contacts does he own now, right? For the billion dollars that he spent, right? And and so when you look at you know the information that this company has or, or he has between his companies you start to ask yourself, well, if we didn't have to drive the cars, would flying cars make sense? Even if they went over roads, right? Like even if they didn't like fly over buildings like you see in the Jetsons, but they went over roads, right? And because we have flying cars, would that reduce the amount of traffic? Because everyone should be, right? What causes traffic? Really stupid drivers and accidents, right? And so if every car was self-driving and every car was self-flying and you had cars on the road and cars above the road, would there be significantly less accidents is one. 
And that would mean that there would be significantly less traffic because even if there was more cars on the road, it would move in a certain, you know, speed. There would be a path. There would be, you know, a, a method going on. And so it's not that far-fetched to believe that this is, this is the future, you know? It's not that far-fetched. And, and, you know, listen, the world's changing at a really rapid pace in every, every facet, you know, technology, humanity, um, uh, there, there's consumption of the planet. Let's just be real. Like we're consuming species and we're consuming the planet. Uh, the waters, the ice caps are melting. We all know global warming. We all know we get it. You know, there was an ice age in this world before, like th this shit happens. It's like, you know, it's evolutionary. Um, and I think there's two major fears in the world right now. And, and those fears are way bigger than any technology or anything else. And the two major fears are, yes, the evolution of the planet, but it's moving faster than it ever has. Therefore, the animals can't adjust as quickly, right? Like, you know, the fish can't get gills and breathe underwater fast enough to, you know what I mean, yeah. to do this. Um, and then the second thing is that, and, and believe it or not, this is an Elon Musk thing. He said that we're in trouble because we're producing less humans than we ever have before, mm -hmm. right? So then you start to think, okay, well, if there's less humans, wouldn't that be less disruption of the world? His thought process is actually we need more humans or we're going to fall apart as a humanity, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, you know, it's a very interesting kind of position that we're in and we're getting to see this evolution and more than anybody else in the history of the world, because we have technology. You know, we can see it on our phones. There's news reporters reporting it every day. Like, you know, within seconds of somebody going through something like Trump in the courthouse in New York, like within seconds that hit every news channel on the planet and everyone knew, like within yep. seconds. And 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 then within minutes, there were influencers on social media talking about it. Well, today, blah, 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 right? Like, and then there's the spinoffs, like the secondary social media people that are like now you know, pointing at the green screen behind them and talking about what's going on. And it, it's just, it's incredible to see the evolution of the world as it is and see the enormous amount of connection we have and equally having the enormous amount of separation that we have as humans. And, and it's very difficult to explain how that's even possible, how that's even happened, you know? It is, and and you know one way that the, one way that this relates to some of the things that we we that we talked about earlier is even though there is a even though there is a human element in this business and and still will be, how do you converse and connect and have the um, ha have the capacity to carry on connect and have conversations with people who don't necessarily have the ability to do that right. Let's face it, we, we do see a generation of buyer and a generation of upcoming buyer that prefers a technologically advanced platform and forms of other forms of communication that did that kind of discredited a little bit of the human factor we were talking about. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's still a little yeah. bit of that there always will be. But how do you you know, this goes back to that to that whole thing we just talked about, about advancing, embracing and and being the best you can be using these these technology tools. The whole generation, that's all they know. You and I remember when we didn't have shit. We had pagers, man. These kids today would die if they had a pager. Right. But you and I remember yep. this generation. We remember the generation that evolved into the Internet. Y2K. I remember I thought the world was shutting down because they told us everything was going to die out. And the moment 12 o'clock hit, boom. Life was still good. It only got better. Uh, so, you know, that, that generation and, and, and ongoing, that gener those other generations that they label, it's, 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 it's difficult for some to understand how to connect and communicate and evolve. But it's one thing that we're just going to have to do. You just said it. And we talked about the whole car situation. We talked about what, what Elon Musk is doing. Listen, it's not about Tesla. It's not about the cool electric car you get to drive. It's super advanced. This guy goes deeper than that. That's surface level stuff. That's the cool shit, right? And let's talk yeah, about yeah. the uncool shit. The evolution of what he's doing, whether you like him or not, I mean, he's a he's a brilliant guy. He really is extracting things and forecasting things 
for everything worldly known to better enhance our ability and our ways to do things, even as we sit here as real estate agents, even as we sit here as, as, as mortgage professionals, even if we sit here as title uh, agents, or even if we sit here as salesmen, whatever the case may be, the, the outstanding approach to what these guys that are much smarter than I am are, are doing is really trying to embrace and embody the things that everybody else is fearful of and make them better and create things that are easier for us or making us better at what we do. Many years ago, I remember having a conversation with, with somebody much smarter than I was, uh, kind of a mentor to me. And he said, Prince, he said, you know, the thing that really bothers me about the way we communicate today in our industry, and this guy wasn't even in the real estate industry, uh, he was he was with a Fortune 500 company. He said everything we do in the form of communication and and and, and advertising slash marketing is we dumb things down. He said adults we dumb things down to adults to a fifth grade level. Now David, that resonated with me when I started really understanding what he was talking about. What he is saying there is that we don't see ourselves being smarter than a fifth grader for for lack of better words, right? So what have we done to ourselves? Uh, what have we not done to the industry? And what could we do to enhance that? What could we do to be better at, at our skill set? What could we do to be better at learning technology and embracing technology? And what could we contribute to the younger generations by saying, hey, yes, this is going to be your everyday life going forward. And what we want to do is we want to help you get smarter and we want to get smarter in the process, right? I have a five-year-old son, um, single dad. Um, he doesn't know what I knew growing up. He only knows what he's been exposed to in the last five years and going forward, right? I'm no good to him unless I go with him or unless I get out in front of this. And these are the things that are really, really, really important to me in life, in business, in every aspect of, of why I'm here on this earth. So uh, that said, the times that we're living in, <clears throat> phenomenal. And, and, and as bad as we think it is economically, the overall grand scheme of this is phenomenal. And it's only going to get even more, more lavish and more and more and more open to the things that we've talked about here that are going to advance our ability to get more comfortable, feel better and be better as humans. And I'm excited to see what happens. I really am. I think in my lifetime, in your lifetime, uh, I certainly think we're going to see some things <laughs> think about, buddy. You know, we just can't get yeah. arms. I think, uh, I, I, you know, listen, I'm not the guy, right? I'm not the guy. I'm not the creator of the tech. Um, I just know that's not my 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 thing. But what I do know is that I embrace the hell out of it. So when you talk about what we give back to the younger generation, I put it in two positions. There's only really two positions that you need to continue to succeed in this world. Number one, embrace the change. Very simple, right? Embrace the change. Number two, embrace the relationships. Those are the only two things you need to know. If you want to succeed in any business that is an ever-changing business, like especially real estate, those are only two things you need to do. Embrace the change, no matter what it is, by the way. I said change. I didn't say technology. I didn't say, I said change, right? So right. we're going to get new tech. We're going to have different markets. We're going to have ups and downs in interest rates. We're gonna, all that shit's going to happen. You know why? Because life happens. Economy happens. Right. Like the world spins. You know what I mean? And, and then embrace relationships, I think, is a major key because because of technology, people believe that the relationship is sending text messages, and that's not a relationship. A relationship is getting to know somebody, understand their needs, wants, and desires, getting to know their families, getting to know their ailments, getting to know their positives, you know, getting to know them as human beings and creating a, re a connection with them that is outside of the sale. And if you can do that on a consistent basis with, with a genuine attitude and, and, a, and, and a formidable uh, method in really giving a shit, like just, you know, you care, you actually care. Um, you'll create a business that is completely undeniable, unstoppable, and no one will be able to banish it. And, 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 and you could do it while embracing change, embracing technology, embracing, uh, doing all this extra stuff, 
nothing's going to change your ability to pick up the phone and call somebody to check in on them, see how they're doing, be the conduit for them, help them if they need help, send, give them, send them soup when they're feeling sick, you know, like send them flowers when they have a death in the family, you know, uh, send them a box of cookies when their kid wins the, wins a volleyball championship, you know, like, like be a freaking human, man, you know? And, and like you said, we, we live in a world where people, salespeople, unfortunately have become order takers because it's been easy. I call it the number two, right? It's like going to McDonald's and just saying, can I get a number two? And they just blindly give it to you because the number two has been the number two for ages. Right. And so, you know, it, there's not much thought process that goes into putting the two burgers, French fries and a Coke in your hand. Um, and, and you got to get out of that mindset. You got to get out of that mindset, really, really push into relationships during the transaction, after the transaction, you know, and, and, and in every part of the, 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 the sales process, if you will, be a human, you know, you know, you, you, you mentioned something, I'll go back to a post that you posted uh, that they really caught my eye. Um, you know, when, when we, we as individuals, um, we get up every morning, our feet hit the floor, <clears throat> you know, we're awarded two things. Uh, well, really three, good Lord bless you with another day. Right. But, but yep. second and third, really, you get a choice and a chance. I hear so many people say, well, you know, I, I when I, when I, when people reach out, I hear this a lot. I, I really do. Uh, and I have more of these conversations than I'd like to even admit that I have, but people will reach out or I'll run into people uh, in, in business settings or, or something. And they say, man, my, my circumstances just won't allow me to do that. Really? Yeah. So, you know, we love war stories, right? We're, we're all, we're all yeah. about war stories like you and I talked about, yeah. but really yeah. I love everybody's story because you got the same choice and same chance I did. Look, man, I'm a bootstrap dude. I knew at 14 years old, I did not want my life and my career OK, to be piggybacked on some jack wagon that had less experience or less knowledge of me. But he was he was my superior or my boss just because of whose ass he kissed to get there. Right. So I yeah, knew what, yeah. level, what level of, of life I was choosing at a very young age. I'm not saying you have to, but I did. But I, I knew what came with that. And the same thing even goes today. We live in a time, you say it's the best time ever. It is. Let me tell you why. Because we live in a time now where you don't have to fall victim to the certainties of what the world has trained you to be. You don't have to fall victim to that little minuscule thing that school told you to be. I'm a school advocate, okay? But what I'm not is I'm not a complacency advocate. School was designed to train people to be workers, not thinkers. We've heard this many, many a time. you got to think for yourself. So that choice and chance that you have every day when you wake up is the very same one that I do, the choice to be better and the chance to give better, the chance to, or the choice to be an entrepreneur and the chance to be an entrepreneur. No better time than now in the world we live in have we seen people have side hustles, create multiple streams of income, create new businesses, Hell, you can run a hundred thousand dollar a year business from your computer ten hours a week if you know what you're doing, right? And yes, I'm not yes. saying that getting rich is made easy or getting rich is simple. It takes a lot of work, a lot of investment, a lot of time, a lot of care, a lot of knowledge. But we live in a time where you can do that as a as a, as a single dad. You know, you look at these things because the legacies we're trying to leave is not just money. There's so much more to that. You know, you, they, we've got to leave a generation at some point <clears throat> and we've got to give them the skill set to be able to navigate what what they're going to be coming up through, what what they're going to carry on for future generations. But those two things are one of my big topics. Those two things are one of my sore spots when people say, well, my circumstances are different. No, your, your situation is, but your circumstances aren't because you have the same thing we do. Right. You got the same 24 yeah. hours in a day. Seven days a week, yeah. same two months out of the year, the same year after year. But you decide if your circumstances are something that you're willing to deal with to be able to take advantage of your choice and your chance to go forward and be better. Um, That's so what this entire book was premised on, right? So, you, I, you know, I wrote this book. It was number one for a hot minute on Amazon. Um, you know, I made a deal with everyone. I created a training behind it. And I said, you buy 10 books, you get the training for free. 
you know, uh, you know, I, I even said share your username and password with your nine friends that you give it to. Like, I don't really give a shit. You know what I mean? Point yeah. is, how can we get as much information in people's hands about the topic of stop looking for failure, thinking that it's going to help you succeed and start looking for success so that you can find the next steps of success and the next steps. So, yeah, and you premised a lot of it in what you were saying right now, you know. We all have the same 24 hours and what we do with that 24 hours is the game changer. You know, well, you have to want to be better and you have to have desire and you have to have patience, by the way, because again, we live in a world of instant gratification. And, you know, just because you think you're going to be great at something overnight doesn't mean you necessarily are. And if you have patience and you do it for long periods of time, like you and I have both in, been in this industry for almost two decades, I, you know, and I'm sure that you and I both have shit that we can learn. You know, I still hire coaches, by the way, you know, like uh -huh. it is, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Brother, man, I, I'm going to cut us. We're almost at 50 minutes. And this was a, like an amazing conversation. I think personally, I, <laughs> you know, we got to do this again sometime. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think uh, we, we left out some topics that I really wanted to dig into uh, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this, this, uh, this episode from paper to AI sales. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right, because there's the psychology it. behind, yeah, there's a the psychology behind everything that we talked about. And I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Probably one of the realest conversations I've had in a minute. You know, it, it's hard to get people in our industry to get into a mindset, to have a different type of conversation. Uh, you know, I changed my podcast method. I used to invite a lot of top producers on and great agents and, and, you know, after a couple hundred episodes, they all start to sound the same, you know? Oh, yeah. And and so I got bored with it. And I actually, I, 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 I put the Freedom Achiever podcast in lock and key and didn't touch it for some time because I really didn't know what I wanted to do with it. And I started another show called The David Adam Curtis Show. And that's just me talking. It's different. It's like me thinking about certain topics and then I just pop it into a podcast. And, um, and then I had a conversation with a coach of mine. And he said, you need to bring it back and just have like down to earth, real conversations. Like, you know, people are so tired of hearing about what they need to do as a professional, make your calls and pick up your phone and schedule your calendar and blah, 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 blah. Right. But they need to hear real world scenarios and, and, you know, digging into people's lives and businesses. You know, my last podcast, we talked about, you know, marriage, we talk, like, you know, dude is 34 years old, just got married for the first time. I was like, damn dog, you did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you got no kids, you know? <laughs> I remember that you first know. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, this and, is one, one of the things when I, when I, when I get, when I'm involved in chats, groups, meetings, whatever, um, you know, they, there's a, there's a, there's a real side to what we do in the entrepreneurial world. Let's just, let's not even call it real estate, but in the entrepreneurial world. And then there's, then there's the screen side and somehow those two never marry, but I'm, I'm, I'm not that guy. I mean, you're going to get the good, bad, the ugly, the, you know, it's, it is what it is. Let's, let's talk about the, the, the bad. Let's talk about the good. And then let's talk about what's next. You, you said it, we've been in this two decades, right. Or, or longer than two decades. We could always, you know, use more, learn more. You can always do better. Man. Like, yeah, I don't ever feel like success has hit us where success really hits us because we measure success in different manners. I don't measure it monetarily like some people do. I measure it in a completely different form. But I'm still so far away from where I want to be. But I'm so far from where a lot of them are, right? And, and yeah. you know, people can say, well, you know, you've done this or you did that. Well, yeah, man, but you don't know what I had to do to get to that point. And now you don't right. know what I'm going right. to have to do to get to the next point, right? Nobody knows my journey and my story unless I tell it. So That's I think the answer, real right? life shit is what people need to hear. They need to understand that it's not what you see on Facebook. It's not what you see on TikTok. It's not what you see on Instagram. A million dollars listing New York or L.A. Yeah, who cares, man? <clears throat> I mean, listen, I've I've listed and sold a big, big properties before, but I've never posted them. I've never said one thing about them because I don't really get my rocks off of saying, hey, here's the deal. I mean, the largest transaction I ever did, I'm not even going to tell you how big it was because it was freaking big, but it was a yeah. phone call. It was a phone call because I said, you know what? I wonder what's going on in this situation. I'm just going to pick up the phone and call this guy and just see what happens an hour later in a conversation. Had a listing and 12 months later, I was able to sell it. 
And about six months after that, after a due diligence, we were able to get it closed. That resulted in a six-figure commission, my friend, bigger than anybody had probably done in one single transaction. No bragging That's rights awesome. here, but I never posted about it, right? So it took 25 years to get that. I mean, I'll do yeah. another one in, in 15 years. But the point <laughs> is, is, this that's is not the way it's cool. supposed to be, man. You're supposed to do one next week. Let's go. <laughs> hey, that, that's, what, that's what TikTok and, and social media tells us, right? Because there's somebody else out there doing that. But all that yep. to say, I really enjoy being here. Thank you for your time. I'm available anytime. You, if, if you want to hear the raw, uncut shit, I'm the guy to get yep. it from because I'm no holes barred. Yep. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. For everybody that's listening to this show, special thanks, Prentice, for doing this with me. Um, you know, you got collectively 40 years of experience here talking to you about what's going on in the market and technology and relationships and everything else. So I hope that you pulled something away for you, for your business, for your family. Uh, you know, I, I often think about families. I have a big family and uh, and, and I think about the person that needs to hear this shit so they can put more money in the bank, right? And and really just make it a renowned effort to take care of their families better, you know? And and if you don't have a family, you're listening right now and you're not resonating with what I'm saying, don't worry, my brother, because you know, you need to stack some money because family's coming. You know what I mean? Like right. it's just the natural evolution of what's happening in your life. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be like it was for me when I was 19 or if it's going to be like my last guest who was 34 and got married for the first time. Like, I don't know what it is for you. But if you're listening, man, I hope that that you pulled something out of this and really made it the best. And by the way, if you're still listening, it means you actually enjoyed the show. So if you enjoyed the show, do me a favor and prove that you enjoyed it by hitting that subscribe button up there, you know, um, and just all you got to do is like, comment, and share, man. Honestly, if you guys have comments, if you have questions, things of that nature, I always go back to the YouTube and the podcast, check them out, see if anybody asked a question so I can jump in and help answer. And we're here to help however however we can. Leaders like like Prentice is coming to the table and really sharing his information. It's, it's, it's what leadership should look like. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.